Hi, we're back again for another week of statistics, and this week we're learning about the connection between cross tabs and hypothesis testing. And to do that, we need a little something called chi-square. And chi-square is a little bit, uh, at least you use it a little bit like you've been using a z-score in your hypothesis test. So we'll get into that. Uh, to start off, you need to think back to last week. We're crossing two variables like this. We had an independent variable, in, and the categories of that are in the columns right here. Then we have a dependent variable, and the categories of that are in the rows. So we have to make sure to percentage this thing the right way. Specifically, we percentage through the categories of the independent variable. Then we read or interpret across, uh, or I should say through the dependent variable. So as you can see, uh, here the percentage of men, 37.5 plus 62.5 adds up to 100. Same thing for women. So what we have here is the percentage of men who smoke, the percentage of women who smoke. Now, if you percentage this thing the wrong way, you're going to have the percentage of people that smoke that are men, or the percentage of people that smoke that are women, and that's kind of a funky way to do this because you may have more men or more women in the study. Here you have twice as many women as men. So if you tried to interpret things that way, you wouldn't really get what you're looking for. You'd see that twice as many women smoke, or I should say among all those that smoke, twice as many are women. But that doesn't necessarily mean that twice as many women smoke. So we have to in short, we have to adjust for the size of the categories of our independent variable. That's what, what we're interested in. And we want to talk about the percentage, the percentages of that category that fall in the dependent variable. So if nothing else, memorize percentage through the independent and read across the dependent to interpret. And this gets you pretty much caught up to where we were last week. And we're going to move beyond that now and go do something else with that. So hopefully you can see that from this study we have 120 men and 240 women and among men some smoke, some do not smoke. Among these 240 women some smoke, some do not smoke. It's helpful if you can see that that way in your mind. Uh, students that are able to see this uh, this way tend to be able to work with the cross tabs a little better. So if you can try to wrap your mind around that, it could be very helpful. Now, here we have uh, our table, and we want to interpret it. It's already percentage for you. So we have 37.5% of men smoke, and 62.5% do not 27% of women smoke, and 72.9% don't. So again... Here we just have two categories, so if we know those that smoke, we automatically know that the rest don't smoke. So you could focus on just one category and say 37.5% of men smoke compared to 27.1% of women. So a higher percentage of men are smokers. But the question for this week, and we, we kind of uh, got right to the doorstep of this last week, is that statistically significant? Did that just happen by chance? We could have gotten kind of just... A uh, uh, funny survey, you might call it colloquially. We got a higher, uh, more male smokers in our survey than what we have in the population. It just happened to fall that way. So that's a question that we've been concerned with when looking at for T scores, Z scores, and the associated p values. We're trying to figure out, hey, what's the likelihood that this just happened by chance? That this is a fluke, and there's not really a difference. And that's sort of the basis of hypothesis testing. And we have that same question here. But you'll notice that here we have uh, nominal variables. And we can do a two-mean test when we have interval or ratio level variables. But we can't do a two-mean test uh, when we have these nominal variables. We don't know the average of men. We don't know the average of smoke because we can't compute it arithmetically. We can't compute an arithmetic mean. And that goes clear back to the first week of class when we talked about what kind of mathematical operations are appropriate for which level of measurement. So chi-square gives us a great way to do some comparisons and find the statistical significance for nominal variables uh, 
or ordinal variables. And we'll get into that a little bit more here in a while. But the central question of this uh, type of analysis is, does the independent variable help predict the dependent variable? And put on the brakes for a second. Say that four times in your mind, five times, maybe even seven times. Does the independent variable help us predict something about the dependent variable? And if you can see that, you're in good shape. If you're thinking, well, why would I care about that? You're not in good shape. You're in trouble for this uh, module for, for chi-squared. So this PowerPoint makes uh, illustrates this for you a little bit, and hopefully you leave uh, this presentation starting to realize, oh, I see what's going on. And once you start to realize that, you're in good shape for chi-squared. So let's take a look at that. We have, again, 37.5% of men who smoke compared to 27.1% of women. And let's just focus on the smoking category right now and kind of ignore the do not smoke category. So what would it look like if the independent variable didn't help predict the dependent variable? What would it look like if the independent variable didn't help predict the dependent variable? It gives us no new information. And we know that 30.6% of people in this study are smokers, right? This is a, the, per, the total percentage of people in this study or this survey, this data set, that are smokers. So if, if all we knew was this 30.6%, the independent uh, variable, the categories of the independent variable give us no new information. So that's the assumption uh, and stop right there and log that into your brain that the expected value, we call it the expected value, if we didn't have any information from the independent variable would be 30.6 because we know that percentage of people are smokers and we don't know what percentage of men and what percentage of women this is the best information we have, 30.6. So now you're taking your independent variable and you're going to compare that and say, how much does this uh, information change that? How much does knowing the percentage of men that are smokers and women that are smokers, how much uh, impact does that have? And it really comes down to difference, like a lot of things with statistics, right? If we see that 31% of men are smokers and 29% of women, we don't have a lot of difference happening here. But if we have 37 and 27, this is 7 percentage point difference and 3 percentage point difference. Now we're starting to think, it looks like this may be different. It's starting to get big enough to convince me. Does that remind you of z-scores? We're starting to see a number that's big enough, far enough away from the mean, that is starting to convince us, hey, this would be very unlikely, uh, you know, if the, the true mean were 30.6, or in this case, if there were no difference between these two variables, if everybody were 30.6, just like the overall, like the total suggests. So hopefully, um, if nothing else, you can sort of memorize that. And think of that as the null hypothesis. So if nothing else, maybe you can think, hey, I know null hypothesis means no difference. Nothing's going on here. Well, this is absolutely no difference. The total is 30.6%, and that's true for women, that's true for men. So that's your null hypothesis. There's no difference here uh, between these categories of, of the independent variable. They're not adding anything to this study. And from there, we can actually quantify that through uh, some math but really pretty straightforward math and nothing more difficult than anything you've done so far and that may or may not be a good thing in your mind but I know that you can do this and again I'm going to give it to you in English you're going to see it in English and understand it in very accessible terms with an example and I'm confident you'll be able to do it so when we talk about chi-square we have two different chi-square tests and one is a one-way test called goodness of fit and another is a two-way test. Um, we use this with our cross, uh, our cross tabulations, or our cross tabs. So, again, this null hypothesis is the idea: is everything the same? So, for a one-way test, your interest is: 
Is there any difference in the categories of that single variable? For a two-way test, you're saying, hey, does the independent variable tell us anything about the dependent variable? Does it help us? Does it add anything beyond what we would have uh, without it? And another way to say that is, are these two variables related? And that's what you've been hoping for from the first day of class, hopefully, is to be able to use your two variables that you chose early on and to see if they're related. And we're going to do that this week, and you're going to be able to do that in SPSS this week. So here's an example. Examples tend to really help us see what's going on here. And you could think about uh, in terms of a one-way chi-square. Sort of a really ready-made example is a multiple choice test that has answer options A through E. And in this case, what would the null hypothesis be? If all of these were exactly the same, the same number of A's, B's, C's, D's, E's. And some people have this idea that a professor tries to do that. They don't want to favor A or B because then you'll have some clue about what the right answer is if you pick up on this tendency. So let's, let's use chi-square to test that, and that's exactly what we could do is say, here we have a single variable, multiple choice answers. We know the percentage of, of each that we see on, on this exam. And we can clearly see that they're not the same. But the question is, is this difference big enough to convince us that it didn't happen by chance? Is it statistically significant? So again we can tell that there you know this professor favors A's and B's uh, and we have uh, because again we have nominal level data we can't really use a two mean test so we have chi-square to the rescue here to to bail us out and give us a way to to do this and if you think about this yourself first how how would you do this how would you mathematically compute or quantify if we have a statistically significant difference. And the answer comes back to this idea of expected value. Uh, if these categories are not helpful, if, if there's no difference, the null hypothesis would be 10 A's, 10 B's, 10 C's, 10 D's, and 10 E's adding up to 50. So there's no difference between these categories. The categories uh, Again, this is sort of the, the idea of the null hypothesis. These categories, we don't know uh, anything special by virtue uh, of these categories. We can't, we, we can't say that the professor favors A or B and say, well, now we have some more information. We can just always choose A because it's more likely. There's no difference. Everything here is the same. So that would look a little something like this. So here you have your observed percentages, 24% A's, 28% B's, clearly more. We would expect 10 straight across the board, or 20%. 10 divided by 50 gives us that 20%. So now we're comparing this 24 to 20, 28 to 20, 18 to 20. And the question is if there's enough here to convince us that uh, this is statistically significant. So that's going to be the topic of the next video. Uh, and be sure to uh, go back through this and study anything that isn't completely clear before you um, move on in the module. Take a little quiz or two and test your knowledge, and I'll see you in the next video.